So what are some of the projects that you've recently worked on? So at the National Ignition Facility, it's a large laser facility, the largest in the world. It's about the size of three football fields and has 192 laser beams that are you know, about 40 centimeters each. And one of the things you have to do is have these special optics that double and triple the frequency of light. And so I grew the crystals these, um, that are, they use to make these optics. So these crystals are 800 pounds. So they're, you know, big, giant crystals that are nearly perfect. And you had, we had to figure out a way to grow them that large and that perfect that you could put a high power laser through them. Did you get to interact with any of the filming for Star Trek? That was a very cool uh, experience. Yeah, they came and they were on our site for about three weeks. They really liked it because they could get these uh, you know, shots in this big volume space. So how did you like meeting the movie stars? It's incredible to look at the, the vision that they have, how they can see some, uh, something, you know, a, a basically a blank slate and know what they want it to look like. This sounds funny, but it's kind of like a, a team of scientists. You still need this whole team of people with all the di different backgrounds to pull it all together and, and, and make it work. Before you decided to be an engineer, what did you think that you wanted to be? I think I wanted to be a vet for a long time because I was around animals a lot. But then I realized that I would have gotten way too sad to be around <laughs> the sick ones. What could a mechanical engineer do to make something that would actually help a veterinarian? They could help make prosthetics for dogs, actually. Uh, 3D printing is used a lot to make prosthetics. What is 3D printing? So 3D printing is basically taking a computer model and turning it into a physical object, layer by layer. What activities were you involved in as a teenager? I was actually heavily involved in Future Farmers of America, or FFA, from the ages of nine to 19. I showed two sheep every year at the Alameda County Fair. At the end of the fair, I went to auction my sheep off, and I was actually able to put myself through college with the money that I raised. So would that be a scholar sheep? Never heard that one before. <laughs> How did water conservation affect you and your family? So my grandparents, for example, they live in a very rural area. Um, the Navajo Reservation is roughly the size of West Virginia, so it's a very big place. Their nearest neighbor is probably five to 10 miles away, and so they didn't have electricity or running water, and so you become much more aware of like the energy of the water that you're using. While you were growing up, who was a fictional character that you look up to? You know, a character I really liked when I was younger was She-Ra, a.k.a. the Princess of Power. She was kind of just a powerful character in the cartoon world when I was growing up. She had this horse that, you know, when she turned into her superhero side, he would turn into a unicorn or pegasus, and, you know, she wanted to do good and help people around her, I think was, was the big thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. My cousins, we had, like, one, uh, a few probably like He-Man action figures. We decided to make a pool out where my grandma lives in the middle of the sand dunes. So we started like digging out water. We kept filling it with water and obviously sand does not retain water very well. Yeah, my grandma finally caught us and we got in trouble. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> what He-Man characters did you have? <laughs> you know, I don't remember the name. I think it was a bad guy. He was like an orange furry character. And I, I sorry, I can't. I can't not remember his name. <laughs> I'll show you all the true power of Beast Man. So what do you do here at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory? We actually make devices that are implanted into the body to restore function for people who are suffering either from a disease or from an accident. So for example, we make these devices called neural interfaces and we've made prosthesis for the eye. So we've helped people who are blind see again. There are prostheses out there that help people who have lost their arm feel things again when you stimulate their nerves. And so there's a, a lot left to be done, but those are some of the kind of things that we're doing now with the, the engineering devices. So you can engineer things and help people at once? Yes, that's, when you're working in the biomedical engineering field, everything you're engineering is to help people. So, for example, if you've seen Star Trek, there is a character, uh, Jordy LaForge, who had a, a visor that he could switch the kind of vision that he would be seeing. There's also uh, characters in Star Wars, for example, Luke Skywalker, when he loses his arm, there's, uh, he eventually gets his arm back, but a robotic arm, and he's able to move it just by thinking about it. So we're moving in that direction. Why did you choose engineering? 
I guess it's the closest thing to being a superhero. They just solve real world problems. And that meant so much to me. Like you get to solve a problem and that's how my mind works. I like to solve problems. And so engineering was just the most interesting major to me. What obstacles did you face when you were entering this industry? It's just like, whoa, I'm so young, I'm so different, but maintaining that mentality that if I just put my mind to it, I can do it, has gotten me through that. Why do you think it's important for girls to pursue engineering and keep up their math and science skills? Try to just get into science, get into math, get into engineering, and see if they like it, because if you, know, you just write it off, you'll never know if you have an interest in that field. So mm -hmm. I would encourage girls to just try. Who is a fictional character that inspired you? I would say is Martha Jones from Doctor Who. She was in the series when David Tennant was the doctor. Uh, she was just really awesome. She was a doctor, well, not the doctor, but a doctor. And uh, yeah, she put the doctor in his place. So I really liked her. I'm a time lord. Right. Not compass at all then. Thank you for coming to speak today. I thought it was really inspirational. And if I'm one day in your position, I'm going to say that you're the person who inspired me. Thank you. <laughs> Last question. Can I have a hug? Yes, you can. <laughs>